So a big part of yesterday, Eric, was, you know, just the, the atmosphere surrounding the game. There was an air, and, and, and I, I referred to it as something different, and it really was. When you think about spring games in general, you don't typically have the kind of hype, the kind of buildup that we saw going into this game. Uh, we got there at, what, 7 o'clock, a little before 7 in the morning? Was it that early? I yeah, because we were sending out text messages at a quarter after 7, letting people know where we were, where we'd already set up at. Okay. So we were there just before 7 in the morning. Eric, the lots were filling up already. They were. Before 7 in the morning for a noon kickoff spring game. <laughs> we weren't the only ones out there tailgating. There was tailgaters all over the place. Uh-huh. It, it had a game day feel to it. Um, and, and I think that was enhanced by the fact that that you had Fox out there for the first nationally televised spring game in college football history. I think not only the Buckeye fans, not only the players, not only the coaches, but everyone right, right now realizes that there is something very special going on in Columbus. And, I mean, without even diving into the game, which, by the way, we talked about what we wanted to see, and we saw a lot of what we wanted to yeah, see. Yeah, and we're going we're gonna to dissect that a lot tonight. So, But just in general – just the dynamic of of the the game itself, the the feel of of what was going on, and, and we had a great view of it from our absolutely awesome seats uh, that we will not share the location of with anybody else. <laughs> we don't want yeah. our secret out. Uh, I don't eighty thousand. I want to say because I've been at every spring game since. 2015. There was one that almost touched 100, wasn't there? That was 2015. Yeah. I would say this was the largest crowd we've had since 2015. Yeah. It was the year after the Natty. That's my guess. Um, Brian, how's the QBs look? What's the depth chart look like? We're going to get into all of that. Uh, yeah. This guy, Ryan Wakerham. Sorry I missed you guys Saturday. Kids, things going on. This guy always has an epic tailgate and he didn't even come to ours the one time, i gave him the business about it too eric ryan <laughs> oh my gosh the catch is going crazy tonight guys uh yeah derek said seats were pretty amazing yeah there's there's some secret seats in the shoe if you know where to go and so we know where to go what can we say um anyways th that was great nick quint hey what's up guys i was one of the eighty thousand there yesterday man you should stop by the tailgate brother we tailgated before and after tailgate after it was awesome longer after they anticipated since we couldn't get the match light charcoal to light took That's a little right. while to get it going so uh anyways it was it was a lot of fun jr you were there what were your thoughts man initial thoughts of the spring game yesterday yeah so it was pretty special for me it was the first uh time that my kids and my wife were in the shoe so that was a really really cool experience uh, just for them to be able to see it for them to be able to experience it um, my daughter kicked like the guys in front of us so many times so part of the game was me feeling bad that she kept kicking them and the other part of the game was actually watching it and enjoying it but I mean we sat up high and we thought well you know hopefully there won't be a whole lot of people around us because we have kids and stuff like that Man, they filled in real quick right after the game started I mean I was astonished at the crowd i wasn't at the one that had 100k but man i'll tell you what the crowd was there it was awesome uh and just a great day too i was watching some other spring games like uh like old miss and penn state they got to do stuff to get people to come to their spring games they got to do stuff on the field you know old miss brought in joey chestnut for a like halftime hot dog eating contest and stuff like that not at Ohio State, guys. At Ohio State, they come, and uh, guess what? Those fans up north come as well because they know what's coming to them this year, and they got to get in the bragging while they can uh, because they had to cheat for it. But <clears throat> that's uh, that's another story for another day. I saw the the pictures of the Michigan fans there, and I was like, man, how desperate do you have to be to have to go to a, your rival's spring game? I yeah. We had some right beside us, actually. Very nice people, by the way. I'm sure they were nice. Did you really? 
The guy in the Detroit Lions shirt was a Michigan's fan. Oh, over at the tailgate. Yeah. yeah. He actually, uh, I don't think he went in. I think he stayed out. Did he? Yeah, I think he stayed out and guarded. I have the a little bit more respect for that than to go and just troll the tailgate. Yeah, but and drink. <laughs> his family was his family's Buckeye. His family fans, was yeah. Ohio State fans. Yeah. There was like two or three of them that I think were family visiting from out of town, but very very nice folks. Yeah, uh, yeah, just house divided situation there. But no, I know I, I know the picture wife, that JR's talking about. And my wife got in a fight with somebody, so it was like a full game. You know, like, did she win? So many people there. Well, they just argued with each other. You know, that's how. She Come on. Another, it was another mom. So You didn't get her to throw down? No. Just a whole lot of bickering back and forth. And I said, go, 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 go. We don't need this. Go, 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 go. I'd like to actually get in the game. Go, go, go. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Uh, let's get into some of these chats here real fast. Uh, Jeremiah Yoder, wasn't that sweet to see our Buckeyes again? As much as my scarlet and gray fever was apparent, I can't even imagine how bad that will get once the August rolls around again. Yeah, it's only going to get – I'm telling you, dude, the the hype train for the season done left the station. And, and can after, we just say – oh, go ahead, Eric. And after what we saw yesterday, the hype train's getting bigger. Can, can we just say that we actually saw – some offensive line play yesterday. Yeah, we're we, we're going to talk about it. Yeah, That's, Nick that Quint. was that was exciting to me. What did you think of the TTUN fans at the game? I was sitting in the Ohio State end zone side, and he walked by, and everyone booed him, and he kept egging everyone on. Yeah, that's just it's just a troll. That's just a big giant troll. Um, I bet Mrs. Jr. could hurt some folks. <laughs> she could. Get that mom energy going, protect her kids. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's get um let's get into some of this a little bit. For how long now, Chris? I have been I've been riding the offensive line. I mean, I saddled them boys a year I, ago. It's been two years at least that we've been two, two and a half years we've been really riding this line. We came away from the spring game, and I remember the sitting in the tailgate. We, we recorded this. Sitting yeah. in the tailgate after the spring game last year, and I told all of you, if the offensive line doesn't get any better, this season's not going to go the way we want it. And despite how bad the offensive line was last year, they still won 10, 11 straight games to start the season. And that's with a Honda as your quarterback. This offensive line yesterday looked physical. They looked competent. Um, they started with Carson Hensman at guard. Um, yeah. Seth McLaughlin. His natural was position, at by the way. Yeah, exactly. Seth McLaughlin was at center, so that answered that question for us. Second drive with the one with the ones. We then saw Tegra Shabola look at guard, and guess what? He did well. He did really well. He picked up the he picked up pass blocking. He got out a lot on some of those uh, sweeps, and his he looked like he could move. Um, yeah. I don't I don't think we're gonna have a problem at that right guard position. Um, the offensive line, the starting offensive line. Now, when we got into the the second string a little bit, they they were having a little bit more trouble. But even the third string offensive line at the end of the game was was moving the football pretty well. Yeah. Our our running game. I'm not overly worried. Even with Dallin leaving. Now, granted, we do have to remember for the first half, a good chunk of the game, first quarter, this was two hand tap. But at the same time, I do feel that it looked right. Uh, you know, I think we got some running backs who are gonna break some break some big plays. I think we got some offensive linemen who are going to open some holes. Uh, man, Quinshawn, when he hits a hole, does he not hit hard? Wow. He hits the hole hard. He he has one thing, thing in mind, and that is just beating everyone else down. Field. You know who he reminded me of? Let's see. Zeke, let's have it. Zeke Elliott. Yeah. One cut and go. Yes. And if you aren't, if you're not in position, he's going to make you look bad. Yeah, I I enjoyed I enjoyed watching him run. I'll tell you who else surprised me was um, the third the third string running back. Well, Pe- Peoples looked good. Oh, uh, Sam uh... Peoples ran hard, man. Yeah, yes. he ran I he ran it. like he was running for a job, didn't he? Oh yeah, 
But uh, Sam Williams Dixon is fast, brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. He is fast. Uh, our running backs are going to be just fine. And with that, with the improvement of the offensive line, I'm I'm feeling really good about this team now, guys. Because those were two things I was – well, the offensive line was what I was really worried about. Now, let's stay on the offensive side of things. Emeka Egbuka reminded everybody, JR, that he is still going to be a first-round draft pick next year. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that what, is that oh, what yeah. you tweeted? I was, I was hey, kid, hold my man. beer. You know, <laughs> I was, and I was the one telling people last year, like guys, even if he's hurt, he's going to the draft. He's still going to be a first round pick as long as he's healthy at the combine. Because every single one of those drills that they do with like the speed and agility and stuff like that, guess what? He's going to be first because the dude just has another level. The way that he's able to move his hips, the way that he's able to ra- run those routes, and the foot speed that he has. I mean, there, there is. I, I mean, I, I haven't watched every single LSU game, so maybe you know Malik Neighbors is a little bit better. But like the way that his foot speed is and the way that he is able to cut. I don't think there's another receiver in college football this year that was able to cut and have the foot speed that he was able to have when he was healthy. I think it, people forgot about it when he got hurt because he wasn't as quick and he did drop some balls toward the end of the year, which is frustrating. But at the end of the day, that's some of the stuff you can't teach and you, you draft because it's, it's really, really good. Yeah. Um, Oh, I also want to make one more comment. Go for it. The blocking, which O-line, great job to them. But if you watch, those wide receivers were blocking too. And that was the piece that I – there were multiple times where if Trey didn't get, you know, one hand tapped or two hand tapped, whatever, thudding, whatever they called it, man, he would have been gone. He would have been gone on on probably three or four different runs. So, guys, I, I was a little discouraged when I saw Will Howard never really throwing past 20 yards. But, guys, we might have way more explosive run plays this year than we have <laughs> passing plays because both Quinshawn and Travion are, are home run threats whenever they touch the ball if everybody's blocking, which everybody was blocking in the spring game. Brian Oberst, offensive line looks improved but still needs to work. By the way, good to see you at the uh, tailgate yesterday, Brian. Um, yes, they still need to improve. There's no doubt about that. But at least they looked competent and at least they looked like they know what they're doing, and and they looked aggressive yesterday. I think some of the, what we saw last year early on, the reason why they looked so timid is they just didn't know maybe what they were doing, and that comes with two things. Number one, I think experience, and number two, I think that there is a clear offensive like voice now. Yes. And I think that that has solidified this offensive line in what they're trying to do. Um, I can't I can't express enough how much Chip Kelly I think has improved this offensive line. I'm not saying he's he has everything to do with it, but he has a lot to do with it, right? Well, they have confidence. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you watch them out there; they are confident in what they're doing. Especially Donnie Jackson and Seth McLaughlin; those are the two guys that are going to carry this offensive line this year if they're going to do great things. Because both those guys, they have the confidence you need. Uh, this, this is what Chris has been saying for a while, Jeremiah. Yeah, he's been saying there's it could po- be possible that we have two one thousand yard rushers in the backfield if they stay healthy. Yeah. Speaking of the backfield, who didn't love seeing three running backs in the backfield to start the game? A little T. A little T T formation. Man, dude, Penn State was running that all year last year, and I literally thought to myself when we got Quinshawn, I was like, I wonder if we'll win some wing T, maybe on the goal line in the red zone or something like that. And then Chip Kelly comes out with it right away. I was like, oh, shit, you know what you're doing, dude. Yeah, he does. (laughs) Yeah, he does. Uh, tight ends. Um, G. Scott is going to be the number one tight end. It, to me, it's evident. Now I heard Jelani that he might may take have been it. injured yesterday. But was that? He was on the bike a lot after that first couple drives. So I, I think yeah. he might have tweaked, tweaked something, something or pulled something. But uh, it, it was evident to me that G is G is the number one guy. But Jelani, yes. yeah, he's 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 a uh, he's a uh, he's pushing. He's pushing. Um. Now let's talk about quarterback play. 
I want to say this is a this is a legitimate two horse race. Agree or disagree? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ju- Julian saying showed yesterday that, that he he's a, a freshman. freshman. <laughs> yes. I think the future, and I, I mentioned this in the article. I think the future is very bright at quarterback for Ohio State. I think there are two young men in there who can are going to really compete next year and be at another level next year. But right now, it is definitely Brown and Howard. Keen Holtz, we'll talk about later in the program. Yeah, we're going to talk about him next. Let's just talk about him. All right. Okay. Lincoln Keen Holtz. Um, why did he play so much yesterday, JR? Oh, he needs it. He needs to play a lot. He needs to get those reps. He needs to improve. I mean, this was his first spring. He didn't do spring ball. Last year, and it shows. I mean, Julian Sayan's first spring, Aaron Nolan's first spring, Lincoln's first spring. And at the end of the day, he needs to be able to get those reps and do what he needs to do to improve. And um, maybe he could run a little bit less. He's dynamic as a runner. I trust him as a runner. He's a really good runner. But he's going to learn to to read the defense a little bit more. And, uh, you know, he's got to be able to throw to his guys a little bit more accurately. I, I have confidence he can do it, but it was evident on – on Saturday that, you know, he's not nearly as close as maybe some people would have thought before. Do you think he sticks around? I hope so. Okay. I don't think so, but I hope so. Okay. (laughs) Fair enough. Um, Will Howard and Devin Brown. um, This is going to be 2023 all over again in the off season. Um, there's going to be a there's going to be a quarterback battle. I mean, just buckle up, buckle up. It's going to happen again. And, and even if Day knows he's not going to, even if Day knows he's not going to say anything until the end because he can't afford to lose either of those two guys right now. Buckle up. I'm. It, it's. And, and now let's be honest. I thought both of them at times had some good things they did yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I think times they both looked a little rough yesterday. Um, Ryan Day's frustrated, Chris. He is. I, he, he, he's been spoiled. I, I, I heard it in his voice. See, we all were there, so we didn't get to see what all of you on television saw with the whole interviewing with uh, uh, What's His Nuts from Fox. Um, Joel Clapp. Joel Clapp. So – when I went home, got home last night, I watched it. And Joe Klatt's talking with Ryan, and you can hear it in his voice. Ryan's a little bit frustrated with the fact that the quarterbacks aren't reading things as quickly as what C.J. Stroud did. And you're right, Chris. Ryan's been been spoiled with C.J. Stroud, Dwayne Haskins, Justin, uh, Fields. Justin Fields. And I think last year's uh, – Honda McCord experience has led red led Ryan day to where we're at today. And he wants one of these two guys to get to the next level. And here's, and I wasn't going to go here this now, but let's go ahead and do it because we're going to talk defense in just a second. And then we got everything we got to do before Jr. leaves. I don't have to leave tonight. Great. I don't, have, take... practice. I don't have shows on Sunday night anymore. Oh, you don't? Yeah, it's just G5, guys. Beautiful. I love how you plan things. All right, then I'm going to take my time. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say, though, was that the success of the 2024 Ohio State Buckeyes, I believe, hinges on one thing. If Buckeyes are going to win a national championship, then either Will Howard – or Devin Brown, either one, will have to take that next step as a quarterback. I think Will Howard is probably closer to taking that step, given the experience he has had and where he's at in his career. But where we're at right now as a program, we have everything in place. We said the offensive line has to be good enough. They're going to be good enough. We've got every skill position covered too deep. The defense is probably the best we've had, if not better than what we had in 2019. 
What we need is a quarterback that takes the next step. And if that happens, Ohio State's going to win the national championship, barring injury. Agree or disagree with my assessment, guys? I mean, I I, I think you need a good quarterback. I don't think you need C.J. Stroud. I don't think you need Justin Fields to win a national championship because I think you have a running back duo that you've never had before uh, under Ryan Day. And I do think that Chip Kelly is a factor in making that, you know, as good as it needs to be. Do we need better than what we saw in the spring game yesterday? Yes. Yeah, we need them to get better. Uh, I totally agree with that. I just don't think we need C.J. Stroud. I don't think we need, you know, the most accurate generational (laughs) passer, uh, you know, that, that Ohio State has seen in a long, long time. Um, so I'm not going to put that pressure on him, but, but I can see where you're coming from. Yes, he does. They both need to improve, uh, because one of them is going to have to be better in order for this team to win a national championship. What we need is a serviceable quarterback. We need somebody who can go out, go out there. He doesn't have to necessarily win us games. He just can't lose us games. But wasn't that McCord? No, was it? Because McCord was, he would lose no. his games if he had the he chance. He would lose his games. Penn uh, State game almost lost that game for us by losing the ball in the pocket. The way he yes. moves around. I mean, there there were so many things about McCord that he got lucky throughout the year because the defense saved him. He yes. lost us. He lost us the Maryland game, and the defense brought him back and made it serviceable. I mean, uh, I know everybody loves the McCord win eleven game step, but you, you, he did you know, though. He didn't. He didn't win 11 games. The defense did. I'll give him credit for winning us one game, and that was Notre Dame, and he shouldn't have done that. (laughs) Right, because he should have threw picks. Brian, New York, heard from a few in attendance yesterday was that yesterday was McCord-like at the quarterback position. Yeah, it was, kind of. You know what, though? Let's not forget, it wasn't all that long ago that we saw Justin Fields have a really bad spring game. Oh, we did. That was that was he his first game in the shoe was ugly in in the and, and game. you look um, yeah, yeah. yeah one of my fa- this is one of my favorite things Jeremiah yes we won the 2002 national championship game with Craig Krenzel this is true and you know what Craig Krenzel did a lot is he wasn't afraid to tuck the ball and run and you know what we what I saw yesterday was a whole heck of a lot of read option going on. Yeah, oh, out of everybody, lot. out of everybody. Oh yeah, that's a that is a, if you can't run the read option, I don't think you're going to be a quarterback in Chip Kelly's offense. Yeah, I mean it was it running the ball. I thought the quarterbacks all looked decent running the ball. Um, I mean as far as if you were just talking about the the actual running and the read option, oh my god, if we were just basing it off that, put Aaron Nolan in there right now, you know. He did awesome in the read option. Uh, Will Buck, interesting comment. Brown didn't beat out Honda. He's not beating out Howard. Howard will be a game manager and run power. I don't disagree with that. I don't either. Only thing I would say is that Brown did get injured and lost a little bit of time. And McCord, you know, I mean, we've said the story with his dad and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I, I don't like the comparison of Brown didn't beat out McCord because I think there were other things there than – but but he but he's right at the same time. Like I like Brown. I really now, want Brown to be successful, but Brown hasn't shown us anything to say like this guy has to be the starter. Guys, tell me this. As far as the actual passing went, I thought Devin's passes looked better for the most part. Um than most of the other guys as far as the the timing and the rhythm. Uh, uh him and Will were I think almost in- identical in a lot of ways. Will Will had a beautiful pass in the end zone that should have been pass interference. That didn't Oh, they, there was a couple of no calls down in yeah. the end zone that uh uh Devin Brown's uh touchdown pass even Ryan Day said it was late yeah. on te- on the telecast. Um, I mean, it went right over the guy's head. He's just lucky the guy didn't I mean it was it was JJ McCarthy throw to the end zone situation where the guy just didn't have his head up to knock it down. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, Brian points that out as well. But Ryan, Ryan Wickerham, just wait until Sane gets more experience and gets bigger and stronger. His year next year probably he he needs he needs a year. Yeah, that was that was physical. evident. That was that was evident saw. to me. He needs he needs a season. This summer and this fall is going to be critical to his development um, as he prepares. Um, Brian Oberst, Aaron Nolan shined in my opinion, and he is fast. Aaron Nolan, this. Okay, what we saw Saturday is why I liked his film so much in high school. Right there. But at like the Aaron same Nolan time. The best, I feel like Aaron Nolan had the best timing out of any of the quarterbacks. He, he, he did, did he look good? He did. He looked very he, good. But let's also remember, Eric, who was he playing against and who were Devin and uh, – Yeah, third string you know. versus first and second string. Yeah. yeah. But still, some, some of that's – not always the defense, like the timing and hitting the players and strides. No, no, and that, like that that was good. But but I see what you're saying too, Chris. Yeah. And I'll say this: nobody ran the read option as Absolutely smooth not. as he did. Yeah. He he faked me out twice, where I was I didn't even know he had the football still. Um, he's gonna be a weapon, and I remember uh, saying, um, forget who I was sitting next to, at the time that, that I made this comment. If he leaves and goes somewhere else, he's going to be a problem. He's good. I'll tell I don't you wanna, what. I don't want to see him leave. I, I do not either. want to see him leave. And, and I really, I thought, I thought coming in that it was destined that we were going to lose another quarterback. You know, I think we're going to lose Lincoln. I thought for sure we were going to lose. Another, I'm not so sure. Aaron Nolan went out there and showed that he can compete with anybody. He's got a legitimate shot at this thing next year. They were talking on the radio that they would not be surprised if Georgia don't call Aaron Nolan. Home state. If I was Kirby Smart, I'd be on the phone with him right now. <laughs> Tampa uh, and all. Brian Obers. Interesting. Dallas Hayden never saw the field. I don't think Dallas Hayden's with the team anymore. He's not on campus. Yeah, he's not with the team. He's gone. All right, let's dive into our letter grades, um, guys, and then we're gonna give uh, hand out some Buckeye leaves. All right, let's start with the offense first. Um, so leading rusher with 11 carries and 78 yards and a touchdown was Sam Williams-Dixon. Um, believe it or not, Aaron Nolan was second on the team in rushing. Five carries, 42 yards. James Peoples looked really good. Ten carries, uh, 40 yards as well uh, and a touchdown. And uh, Quinn Junkins, four carries, 31 yards. Uh, let's see. Travion Henderson, four carries, 18 yards yesterday. In uh, receiving, uh, if you had David Adolph as your leading receiver on the team uh, in your bingo card, pat yourself on the back, four catches, 50 yards. Emeka Egbuka, four catches, 47 yards, and the sickest one-handed grab on the sideline uh, that will be made in spring and anywhere. Brennan Schramm? Schramm. Schram? Schram. Shram, three catches, 31 yards, and a tutty uh, for the day. And he's a walk-on, is he not? And and the, and the sweetest – he takes the cake this year for the sweetest white man afro. Okay? Uh, let's see. Kojo Antwi, two catches, 26 yards. Uh, James Peoples, three catches, 23 yards out of the back backfield yesterday. Uh, and for all of those who were wondering about what – uh, Jeremiah, J.J. Smith, uh, Optimus Prime would do two catches, 12 yards yesterday and uh, was targeted a couple times in the end zone. Good defense on him, by the way. Well, Those and, were your offensive stats yesterday. What letter grade would you give the offense, Chris? You know, the running game was strong. We did have four turnovers. Uh, we had a on, on the opening snap of uh we'll call it team b we fumbled the snap so there was definitely some room for improvement i'm gonna go with a b b minus b. b minus b minus i think we got a lot of room for improvement there but i did see a lot of positives jr I'm going to go B plus. I think that the quarterbacks did okay. Uh, I think that the wide receivers did well. I, th I felt like the routes were one 
run well by the starting guys and the, even the backup guys. You can see why Brian Hartline's a really good wide receiver coach, yeah. guys. I mean, even the backup guys were doing really well out there. Uh, obviously, they're not on the same level as starters, but you know, still really good for them. Uh, and I also think that at the end of the day, if we would have saw Trevion and Quinshawn really actually run, I think I think they could have ran all over this defense, which gives me a little bit of pause about the defense. I don't know if I like that or dislike that. That's one of those things <laughs> where you don't really know how to feel. Um, but you know, we're starting two new linebackers, so it's uh it's gonna be a work in progress for a little bit. But yeah, B plus for me. B minus, B plus. I guess I'll go B. <laughs> go between you guys. Um, how about the fact that we've heard so much about how the defense is dominated and they did get four turnovers yesterday, by the way, like you pointed out, Chris, but uh, the offense did move the football yesterday. And remember they at one time started to drive on their own three yard line and got, drove it all the way down and got a field goal out of it. And this was a team that uh, reportedly at the beginning of spring practice uh, couldn't couldn't get, could not move the football when they had the end zone at their backs. They would be giving up two points left and right. So um, I'll give the, I'll give the offense a B. Uh, Brian Ober says B plus. Uh, Derek says B plus. Um, and that's that's what I see for letter grades in the chat from the offense. Let's flip it over to the defense here real fast. Uh, looking at the defensive statistics. Uh, leading the team with eight tackles yesterday, five solo was linebacker C.J. Hicks. Uh, second on the team with seven was Inky Jones. I don't know who Inky is, but that's a fantastic name. Inky's a walk-on. I love it. There you go, man. Walk on, walk on Super Bowl, as uh, our boy Wargo said at the uh, tailgate yesterday. Aaron Scott Jr. had six, uh, six tackles. Uh, that's a freshman, by the way, a freshman corner. Sonny Probably Styles. Real tackles too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because he was in there playing at the time when they they were actually tackling. Uh, Sonny Styles had six, and Edric Houston, true freshman Edric Houston, also had six. Um, let's see if I can find the sacks category. Let's see. Yeah, Edric Houston. There he is. Edric Houston had a sack. Mitchell Melton had a sack. Jack Sawyer. Had Jack one. Sawyer had a sack. Hero Canoe had a sack. Jason Moore had a sack. And Caden Curry had a sack. Now, I want to preface this by saying some of these sacks were one-hand tap sacks. They weren't truly sacks, but, you know. You're not going to bring down Will Howard with one hand. Yeah, so That's let's, let's be honest him. here. Although there were there was one, there was a couple times where if they wouldn't have blown the whistle on, his, on a tap, we might not have the quarterback left anymore. That's so true. <laughs> you got to be uh, – the, uh, <laughs> take it with what it is for what it is. Chris, what is your defensive letter grade yesterday? Uh, yeah, I wanted a, a B plus on the defense. I thought that there was again, so a few, few little uh, things that could definitely use some improvement. Obviously they moved the ball a little bit too much. I thought that, uh, Igbenosa while in, uh, mid season form was also in mid season form as far as getting away with a few penalties. Uh, you know, just because that's the physical style of play he has. I think at times, even though he got quite a few st uh, tackles, I thought that Sonny Styles got caught up in traffic, uh, had a little trouble, you know, shedding blocks a couple times. Um, overall, not a bad performance, but again, I still think that we can improve. JR, your defensive letter grade from the spring game. Dude, I, I even though I mentioned the thing about the possibility with the run – uh, the run defense, I got to give them an A, man. This is the best secondary in the nation. They showed it. Our defensive ends are five or six deep. I mean, you got Edric Hughes. You got Mitchell Melton out there. Dude was destroying oh, some Mitchell, of the offensive wow. line. Oh my gosh, the way he was playing. Uh, it didn't seem like what def it didn't seem like it mattered what defensive tackle was in there. Hamilton, Moore, uh, Canoe, uh, all these guys. Of course, Tyleek. I mean, all these guys just going crazy. Uh, defensive line is going to be one of the best, if not the deepest, in the nation. And and I love that for Larry Johnson being able to swap those guys in and out. Uh, I am going to love. All right, mark my words. I am going to love when there is a pass rush specialist defensive line of Mitchell Melton, Jack Sawyer, and JT and Tyleek in the middle. 
You're going to see it this year. Mark my words. You're going to see Mitchell Melton out there in a pass rushing situation with Jack, JT, and Tyleek. And those four, and, J- and JT is going to be on the inside with Tyleek, and he's going to destroy a guard because those guards aren't going to be able to know what to do when they get to JT. So I, I th- the defense was fantastic, so deep. I love to see it. And, uh, you know, I just got to <clears throat> feel pretty good about my pick of Tim Walton as the best uh, – as the uh, the best uh, assistant coach on the uh, staff after watching that, because the, the the secondary is about as deep as the defensive line too. I don't know of any other position group in the country that calls their position coach goat. Yeah, but but they do because <laughs> they know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh you might be on to something there jr all right you went with a uh chris went with a b plus so you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go a minus and go in the middle between you two uh just to keep that trend going all right let's check out uh let's look at our offensive and defensive players of the game and plays of the game let's go ahead and start with our offensive player of the game chris uh man i gotta go with quinn sean he was just out there. He was a beast. What, what did he average, Eric? About seven and a half a carry. It was it was a lot, uh, <laughs> and and that was with two and, hand tap. And that was with so, two hand tap. You know he was going to get another yard or two per carry out of all those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just. I, I thought he was great. Jr. Yeah. Um. I think. Oh, who was I thinking? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sam Williams Dickinson, just because he surprised me so much, uh, the speed that he had, obviously he was going against, you know, second, third stringers and stuff like that and and walk on. So, you know, take that into account, but still, I mean, just another guy who should be in high school, but he's out here playing in front of 80 K people and just blazing by everybody super fast. I can't wait to uh, see him when he starts getting a little bit older. Maybe even this year we might see him, uh, you know, run by some guys, but yeah, Sam Williams Dixon, just because he surprised me the most. Brian Oberst uh, says Quinshawn Junkins by far, and he would broke big runs if they didn't blow the whistle. Yeah, they mm-hmm. yeah, they would have. Yes, he would have. Yeah. Um, both of you guys went with running backs. Um, I'm going to pull an Aaron. I'm going to pull an Aaron here. Do not do it. You I'm do not get the, two votes. I'm going to pick the entire offensive line. Guys, I was dogging yeah. them so bad for I won't an get entire on for that year. One. I okay. Can I be honest with you guys? I thought I thought we were gonna come away from the spring game doing, doing the like same we thing we year. did last year and saying our offensive line stinks. And no one's saying that. That is a huge win for these guys, and I want to credit them. So I'm going to pick the offensive line as my offensive MVP for yesterday. Uh, let's flip over to the defensive side of things. Chris, your defensive MVP. Play, MVP. Man, you go so many ways with this. Yeah. Um, my instinct is to kind of pull an Eric there and go with the whole defensive line. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take that way out. Um, you know what? Give me Edric. Edric had a, had a big game. What did, what did we say? Six tackles. Had a sack. And a sack. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Edric. Good, right. good stat line. JR? Well, I was going to pick a defensive lineman too, but now that Eric pointed out both Chris and I picked running backs, I don't know if I can pick a defensive lineman, but uh, I, I'll give him a recognition because I think he deserves it. And I'll give a secondary guy here in a second too, but uh, Jack Sawyer, I mean, the guy had a sack, and if you were – I know you guys were at the game, so you saw it, but like – Man, he, he was on the sideline every – I mean, he it's like he was a coach on the sideline. He was up with every single guy, talking as much as he possibly could. He was he was out there with the guys, cheering them on. I mean, y- you can tell that Jack Sawyer has really embraced himself as, as the leader of this team. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he switches his number to the block O at some point uh, in the offseason and we see him with the block O just because he, he is – he is the full force leader on this team in my mind. Uh, and then if I had to go with a secondary guy, just cause the secondary was so good. I won't try to steal him from you, Eric, if you're going to say him, but uh, Iggy would be uh Igmanosin would be my guy just because man, he was out there. He did not like the talk of Jeremiah Smith and the wide receivers. I think in the, uh, no. 
he went out there. He was a man on a mission. And, yeah, he probably got a few penalties, but he was a man on a mission. All right. I, that's exactly who I was going to go with. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. Um, he His stat line's one tackle. But you know what you don't see in there is how many times on they went to the fade in the corner of the end zone, and he was like, not happening. Yeah. Not happening. Um, you know, we hear all this talk about uh, Caleb Downs, and I was excited to see Caleb Downs. And you know what? At the end of the day, in that defensive backfield, which is just – the DBs are just sick, guys. I mean, yeah. the whole backfield is sick. Um, I love – Iggy's play. He's a baller, dude. And he's not afraid to tell you. And I I want to me, he might be the voice of the defense this year. Like he's the guy I think that is not gonna be afraid to and both cornerbacks are. They're I mean, gosh, what's his what's his face said it's natty or bust, man. So I love the corners. You've I seen think, the oh god, sorry. No, Finn, go ahead. I was going to say, you've seen the intensity change since Igman Osen got there, like you were talking yes. about. Yes. He is, yes. He's physical. I yeah. love his physical play. Um, and so I, I went with him because he was like, you are not going to throw a touchdown on us. And if you the one touchdown that they did throw, because everything else was rushing touchdowns, the one touchdown that was a pass was over the middle on a slant. You know, so it wasn't on those corners. Those no. corners are for real, guys. They are absolutely for real. All right, the offensive play yes. of the game. This is going to be this is obvious, guys, isn't it? I mean, there is one game. There was one play at, that took the breath away from everybody. Oh man, that yeah. is a that is a debate, Sean. Ooh, I'll mark that down for a show, guys. Is Iggy better than Burke? I'm going to write that down. That might I don't be, know if he's better, but he's definitely more physical. That is a great debate. Let's let's have that one one day. Uh, the play of the game, I think we're all in agreement. JR, do you disagree? Yeah. No, dude, that, okay. was, that was the best. It's a Mecca Egbuka's one-handed uh, reminder of everybody how awesome he is. And not only was it a one-handed grab on the sideline, it was an NFL catch. He dragged yes. both feet. Both feet. Yeah. Oh, that was him saying, hey, if there's any scouts out there, don't forget. Don't forget yeah. who I am. Um, All right. The defensive play of the game. I want to go first. It was the final play of the game. I was just going to ask you if it was going to be Deontay Griffin. Come on, man. Archie's grandson gets the pick, runs it back. It was a, what was it, a 100-yard return or 99-yard pick return that – the entire defense came off the sideline to block for him. <laughs> Obviously. Kind, kind of reminiscent of last year. Little when, bit. Uh, Ar Archie did the uh, run. <laughs> yes. I I got goosebumps, man. When I found out that that was Griffin, Archie's grandson, walk on, that got that. By the way, he's the seventh Griffin to play at Ohio State. Did you know that? Seven know that Griffins many. have played at Ohio State. In that family. That's incredible. Okay, now name the other six. Uh, Archie. Archie's brother. No, no. Arch name, Archie, name. Archie's other brother. <laughs> <laughs> Archie's son. I can't. Yeah. I don't know who no, they all neither are. Neither can I. Neither can I. Uh, you agree with that, Chris? You know, I love it. I think it was a great feel-good thing. Um. For me, yeah, I thought it was right at the beginning. I thought the Jack Sawyer sack, man, just kind of set the tone for everything. He got in there and blew it up. He went right over top of Car Carson Hensman with that bull rush and just blew it up. Yeah. So, give me Jack. De defensive play of the game, JR. What do you got? Oh, yeah, same one for me. When, uh, when I saw him take it back and I started looking up, hey, who is that guy? Because I didn't realize it in the moment. Uh, I just I kind of looked up and and yeah like you goosebumps because uh, I kind of you know I mean when you when you're in the shoe you feel it right you feel the game that's going on but you also feel all the history of everything that's happened there and all the great players that have come through and yeah I mean being in the shoe realizing that um, yeah yeah that that was a special moment. 
Hey, Skeeters. Uh, good to have you in the house again tonight, my man. Um, go back and listen to the first part. We already addressed it. Um, to give you a quick su summer summarization, we feel that we need a quarterback who, to take another step. We need one to take a step forward. We have everything in place. Everything looks good. Um, but there needs to be someone take the bull by the horns out of that quarterback room and take a step forward. Um, we saw some good things, and we saw some not so good things from the quarterback room. But everything else was was really exciting from the spring game. But good to have you here, man.